before I share my idea with you, I need to tell you the truth. And the truth is that I have no qualifications to be on this stage. <laughs> I'm serious. I have no research experience. And with no expertise, I want to save millions of lives. Some of you look totally baffled right now, aren't you? But don't worry, I'll explain in a bit. But before that, I need to tell you a story, the story of a gas. And not just any ordinary gas. This is the story of a magical gas. <laughs> you all might be familiar with the name of Alfred Nobel. The Nobel Prize is named after him. He was the inventor of dynamite. So when Nobel was taken ill to the hospital with heart disease, his doctor prescribed nitroglycerin to him. And Nobel found it very weird. He refused to take it because he had used the same nitroglycerin to make dynamite. In a letter, he wrote, isn't it the irony of fate that I have been asked by my doctor to take nitroglycerin internally. Now the question is, why did the doctor do that? As it turned out, doctors that time were aware that nitroglycerin improves cardiovascular health, but they had no idea how. It would take another 100 years until science clarified that nitroglycerin improves cardiovascular health by releasing a magical gas. And this gas is called nitric oxide, also known as NO, or simply NO. And I hold a PhD in no research. <laughs> in the 1980s, the American Association for the Advancement of Science had declared that NO was just another chemical pollutant found in unsavory haunts such as cigarette smoke. Ironically, a decade later, NO was awarded as the molecule of the year by the same organization. And this was just the beginning. Six years later, in 1998, the discovery of NO role as a signaling molecule in cardiovascular system led to a Nobel Prize that was shared among three scientists. Whether you know this or not, NO is released in the body of every human being sitting in this room right now, and on this planet, and even in the universe. In the universe, how? Because I don't want the astronauts to feel left out. So all of us, all of us release NO in order to fight a variety of biological problems that includes cancer, diabetes, wound, clots, infections, and even, this might be your favorite, and even sexual health. And if this made you happy, you would be happier to know that our team at UGA has been working very, very hard to imitate body's natural way of NO release to make biomedical devices. Let me ask you a question. How many of you know someone, even yourself, who has ever been hospitalized or has come in contact with any biomedical device as simple as a syringe, a suture, or a catheter? So most of you, right? And I'm not even surprised. Every year, 1,000 different kinds of biomedical device enter US market. The net worth of these biomedical devices is expected to be $409 billion by 2023, which is higher than the GDP of any of these countries highlighted in red. That includes Portugal, Greece, Ireland, Singapore, Malaysia, and many more. All of you would agree that it is practically impossible to imagine healthcare in the absence of a biomedical device. But do you know? Do you know? that each time you use a biomedical device, it exposes your body to two major life-threatening concerns. And these problems are A, infection, and B, blood clots. Let us understand how does this work. 
So as a part of our immune response, it is the natural tendency of our body to defend itself from any foreign material, including a biomedical device. So when a biomedical device breaks your skin, your body's first response is to form clots. And at the same time, it gives millions and billions and trillions of bacteria in the hospital environment to enter your blood and cause hospital-acquired infections. These infections and blood clots not only reduce the life of a biomedical device, but they also add to the suffering of the patient, significantly increasing the healthcare costs. In the United States alone, 90,000 people die every year because of these infections, and up to another 300,000 people die due to these blood clots as per the National Blood Clot Alliance. The latter is higher than the combined deaths caused by AIDS, breast cancer, and motor vehicle crashes. And these figures can be even more horrifying, especially in the countries with poor healthcare facility. Current treatment options rely heavily on the use of antibiotics to treat these infections and on the use of heparin sodium to treat these blood clots, but both of them have major side effects. Research has shown that the use of heparin can significantly increase the chances of stroke within the first two weeks of its use. And all of us know that the use of antibiotics can lead to antibiotic resistance which is expected to kill 1.7 million people every year, causing a global loss of $100 trillion. Do you know how much it is? The current GDP of the world is around $70 trillion. So this is higher than the current GDP of the world. Isn't it ridiculous that the current treatment options that we have and the biomedical device that we use to save millions of lives are themselves the source of some life-threatening problems. This is very, very serious, and this needs to be fixed. People often ask me, Pant, we are very scared. Is there any hope? Is there any hope for the future? And you know how do I reply? I just smirk and say no. And that is why I want to walk the talk by making biomedical devices that can release NO similar to human body in order to save millions of lives. But NO is a gas. How do we use a gas in the fabrication of a biomedical device? Easy enough. In the lab, we have made synthetic NO donors that can be added to polymer to make bioimitating materials. These materials can be tuned to release NO similar to human body when they come in contact with heat, moisture, or metal ions. Since heat, moisture, and metal ions are readily available in the human body, these NO-releasing materials are an ideal candidate to make invasive biomedical devices such as suture, catheter, stent, glucose sensor, artificial organs, implants, condoms, and much more. We have tested these materials in the lab, and we have found them to be better than either antibiotics or heparin sodium. We have tested the antibacterial efficacy of these NO-releasing material against the most prevalent bacteria found in hospital setting that includes E. coli and Staph aureus, and our results are astonishing. <clears throat> we have shown that NO-releasing material can kill up to 99.9% .9 bacteria. We have also proven the clot-preventing ability of NO-releasing material on both small and large animals, and our results are very positive. And not just that, we have tested the compatibility of these NO-releasing materials on, anos, uh, on human cells, and they are shown to be maintaining almost 100% viability. From a commercialization perspective, from a translational perspective, these NO-releasing material are stable up to six months, and they can withstand most of the sterilization technique. This is awesome. What does this mean? This means that NO-releasing material are effective antibacterial agent. This means NO-releasing material can prevent clot formation. This means NO-releasing material are safe on human cells. And this also means that the use of NO-releasing material will rule out the need of separate therapies for infection and blood clots. Isn't it great?
I see some of you are not clapping now, and you might be wondering, if NO is so great, why do we not have NO releasing material already commercialized yet, right? This is a good question, and I have a very good news for you. Whether you know this or not, there are already existing NO-based products in the market that are used for the treatment of erectile dysfunction, cardiovascular health, and even my favorite, bodybuilding. <laughs> but making and fabricating biomedical devices that are supposed to treat complicated problems is a very time-consuming process. And more importantly, it comes with a lot of responsibility. But with all the positive results that I shared with you today, I'm very sure and confident that we are heading in the right direction. <clears throat> At this stage of my professional career, I'm very excited to invest my future in NO-based research and be at the forefront of this groundbreaking technology. And what is more exciting is that Dr. Handa at UGA, Dr. Brisbois at UCF, and I have co-founded an NO-based company called Innovita Biomedical LLC. So far, we have filed for 12 patents and have published more than 30 research articles in the peer-reviewed journals. Our research has been funded by major federal agencies that includes National Institutes of Health, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Department of Defense, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, Department of Veteran Affairs, and several leading biomedical companies. In collaboration with Vet School at UGA and Department of Defense, we are currently doing animal trials, and we are very excited. We are very excited to bring this technology to the market soon. By now, I hope, by now I hope that most of you would agree that NO is at the center of some groundbreaking discoveries. And the day is not far when NO will be a household name. And when you happen to use or see any NO-based product in future, remember, remember that on this day, a very handsome man, <laughs> remember that on this day, a very handsome man was making brick promises to you with no qualifications. I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> Remember that this handsome man was making big promises to you, and he has fulfilled his promise. Now, before I leave the stage, let me ask you my favorite question. Are you ready to say yes to no? <laughs> Namaste.